Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Blender Developer Rocket Science series. My name is Thomas Beck and today we're going to talk about the new proposed noise modifier from Patrice Bertrand. Um, he wrote a modifier that you can find on uh, developer.blender.org on the ticket D320, like there. So there's quite a lot of discussion already there. So when you'd like to read it, just head over to developer.blender.org D320 and uh, read all those, comment on this issue and tell us what you, th what you think. So what is the noise modifier that he is uh, proposing to add to Blender? That's a new modifier that is uh, generating noise over the over a mesh or uh, um, parts of a mesh, and all your experienced Blender users are now thinking, "Hey, noise modifier! Noise modifier! That sounds like a modifier that we all ha already have, the uh, displacement modifier." And in this series, in this uh, installment of the series. I'd like to show you what is the difference between those two modifiers and how would you use the proposed noise modifier. So let's now quickly switch to Blender. Here in Blender, you see we have a, a very basic object, a rectangular shape, shaped object, and this object is treated with two array modifiers like you see here, one that is expanding this object into the x, x um, direction and the other one that is expanding it into the y direction. So let's activate that and now we got a simple floor here. But I have to admit this floor is very CG-ish and very basic, so everyone that would look at that floor would say, okay, this one is uh, made in a computer. And so normally you would now add a bevel modifier to round the corners a bit. And then um, definitely you would add a little bit of noise to, the, uh, to those tiles. And the noise you would add in Blender with the uh, displacement modifier. Displace, is it called displacement or displace? Um, the displace modifier. You would add a texture there, activate that, and then you would have a fairly irregular shaped floor, and that would be perfect, exactly what we need. So, what is the need for the noise modifier now, you're asking? And that is exactly what I'd like to show you now. For that to see, we have to uh, disable this displacement modifier again and open the noise modifier. And there you see several, object, uh, several options like the individual vert vertices option, the whole mesh option and the loose parts option. When you, s when you look at the individual vertices option, then it would look at exactly as uh, done with the displacement modifier. It would displace the individual vertices that you see here. We have a translation along normals here that will make it translate along the normal until it reaches a level of displacement that is not that nice. <laughs> but normally you wouldn't um, you wouldn't put in those high values, so that would be okay. But that is all nice and dandy, right? The second thing when you disable the translation along normals is that you have um, that you have three values here where you can define if you'd like to um, displace it along the x-axis, along the uh, y or the z-axis, and all those values are maximum values. So those values are taken into account if the factor value here is at one. If you decrease this value, like this, then it's um, lowering this influence of those values until it is 
zeroed out. And that is already pretty cool because you don't have to fiddle with textures and all that stuff, but it gets even co cooler. The probability setting here is um, for deciding if um, a vertice is affected by this uh, displacement or by this noise or not. When you decrease that, then you'll see that it's more regular. It gets more regular and more regular and so you can interactively define how, um, how displaced or how noisy your floor is. So that is all pretty cool already, I think, and really useful. But it gets even cooler. Just wait for it. Because when you'd like to have to, to, um, to influence not only vertices, but um, l the loose parts in this um, floor, so to say every tile, then you would simply switch to loose parts. And what it's doing then is it looks which vertices are connected together and separates all those parts that are not um, connected with each, with each other. And let me just switch it to one again. And then it displaces or what, what would you say? How, how would you say that? It um, alters the location of those uh, tiles according to your settings that you done here. And it's not only the location, but it's only possible to influence the rotation like this or the scale. So with this modifier, you're very quick at uh, modeling floor uh, like objects that are not looking like uh, you've done that in a PC or uh, you could even uh, model bricks or brick walls or something like that that and that's really easy with this modifier and when you are lowering the prob prob probability as uh, we've seen before then you would have more tiles that are regularly placed as, as you um, were without a modifier without a noise modifier and when you are increasing this probability factor then it's uh, going wild and everything is displaced. So that is really, really handy for modeling those types of objects. Now let's just look at the other uh, options that we got here. We got a noise seed here. You, uh, I think you are already familiar with the noise seed or the seed value in general in Blender. Um, seed is just a value that is initializing the random number generator and so when you um, alter this value to any, any value you like then you would simply, um, simply re-initialize the, the uh, random generator and the shape of those uh, objects will change like this. So that is really cool. and when you have two objects like this then you'll see okay that is pretty cool but it's basically exactly the same as before when i got several instances of that object then all those objects are um, rotated and scaled and located the same all those tiles and for that, there is an, another option here that's uh, called object ID as seed. And when you activate this option, then the name that you can see here, I think it's the name, Patrice, maybe you could clarify that. But I think it's the name uh, of this object will, uh, or is it the ID? I think it's it's not the name, it's an uh, uh, internal idea, ID that is used to initialize this random number generator. And so all those tiles are looking differently, even if you have the same uh, modifier tree here. So that is a really cool um, option too, and very useful if you've got uh, several copies of your object. 
And apart, of that, uh, apart from that, you can uh, also use an object for the offset. So when, let me add a, an empty here, like this, and then choose this empty, then you can see, okay, I could also do a matrix-like effect with the empty and thus the closer it gets to the uh, to the center of the original object the more it looks like our floor again so that is really handy too especially for animations and speaking of an animations there is another really cool um, use case for this modifier that i'll show you in the second um, second layer in a sec so let's switch to the second layer there you can see a noise modifier font it's very it's a very simple object such uh, um, a simple text object that is uh, extruded and then um, with limited dissolve beautified a bit and this object is at the start treated with a noise modifier and at the start the factor of the uh, displays of the of the translation and rotation is one so i en entered fairly big values here um, so we can't see it but i think if i'm going a bit out then you see okay those are the simple um, simple letters of this word those two words and when i'm going in the camera view again and doing an animation where i simply set the factor from back from one to zero then you'll see this so it's a very cool animation that is done only by animating a factor like this and so as you can see there are several use cases for that so uh, I re i'm really happy that Pat patrice um, developed this modifier and for the last thing we saw the individual vertices we saw the loose parts now and the last thing is the whole mesh so what is the whole mesh for for that to cover i have to insert a basic mesh let's say a cube that is centered here and then we will add a noise modifier in this uh, it needs a new new icon still but a noise modifier that is um, doing a translation on the whole mesh and oh that would be something that is uh, really cool to show now because um, in the last blender version that wasn't possible just click on this value and drag down there and then you can enter all values at the same time so that is really really cool and really handy in this window so we have now let's say um, a translation of 10 blender units like this and then you'll just copy this uh, object several times now we'll copy it pretty often. So let me just take our camera into this third layer so I could move this, this cam. And now you can see all those objects are at the same position here. But what will be done if I say object ID as seed to all those objects? Let me just activate it on one and then um, select all the all the others and link the modifiers then you'll see that every time I copy this value uh, this um, object it gets placed at a different position and that is really handy too if you got several objects that you like to um, that you like to place randomly and you won't have 
uh, you, you don't like to have the, the trouble of placing each one or rotating each one differently. So that is really cool too. So let's uh, enter a rotation value of 50. And now you see that it's that it gets copied too. So that's the use case for um, noise on a whole mesh. And I think we covered all those modes now, except the noise mode. And the noise mode is pretty easy. That is just um, the algorithm that the noise is applied. So that's uh, said how the noise modes, it's, it's like it's uh, written there, how the noise uh, values are calculated. So you could choose between constant, linear and Gaussian and uh, that will alter your uh, noise uh, a bit. So that was it for this episode. I think you, um, I think we see this modifier very soon in Blender, maybe in the 2.71 release. When it's in there, I will report it for sure. But as a sneak peek, um, I think you learned a lot from this already. And if you like this episode, then uh, add us on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google Plus and pretty new on Facebook. So we'd love to see you there. Just comment on the video, comment on this um, issue on developer.blender.org if you'd like to see it in, if you have any opinions on that. Um, we'll love to see you there and so long. Keep on blending. And we'll see us next time. Bye.